For over five decades, video games have been a staple for entertainment across all ages, cultures, genders, and even geography. Whether it's the thrill of leveling up, the hype of competition, or simply the joy of playing with friends, there are many reasons why video games have risen in popularity throughout the years. To get to the root of it all, we ask the very simple question, why do we play video games? Psychologists have long studied this phenomenon, and while there are many theories and studies out there, we turn to author and behavioral psychologist Scott Rigby, who has focused his research by examining this question through the framework of the self-determination theory. Self-determination theory defines what are called basic psychological needs. Psychological needs for autonomy, for competence or mastery, and for relatedness. And it turns out that these are basic needs that we all share. They operate across all areas of life. And a lot of what we looked at is how do games in particular satisfy these needs as a way to understand their strong motivational pull. Let's break down the three components of the self-determination theory by world-renowned researchers Edward L. Desi and Richard M. Ryan. Firstly, autonomy. This is defined as the need to experience behavior as voluntary and reflectively self-endorsed, or in other words, to feel like we have control over what we do. Autonomy has to do with our desire to feel like we are the authors of our lives. In some ways, we're the hero of our lives, that the things we're doing, we endorse and we're engaged volitionally in what we're doing. And so that is operating very much whenever we feel we have choice over what we're going to do with our lives and how we're going to grow and develop. And you can already see how video games in particular create a very fertile field for feeling like you're the hero, feeling like you're making choices, and feel like you're developing in the way that you want to develop. Second is competence, defined as the need to experience our behaviors as effectively enacted or to feel like we've done a good job. And that's simply our desire to feel like we're successful in what we're doing. When we're engaging in a task, we want to nail it. We want to crush it. And we also want to feel a sense of growth. We don't just want to be doing the same thing over and over, whether it's in our lives or a hobby. We want to feel that sense of development. This is where games provide really powerful mechanics, right? Every single moment in a game, you have the opportunity to get feedback that you're crushing it. And also, if the game is done well, you see your progress and your growth and your skills and your abilities, which then unlock new opportunities to crush it further. Lastly, there is relatedness, or the need to interact, be connected to, and experience caring for others. This is the need we all have to feel that we matter to other people in our lives, whether we're at work or playing a sport or hobby or in video games. We want to feel like we matter to people and that we're contributing to other success and they're contributing to our success. And of course, when you think about video games, there's tremendously deep opportunities for that. As gamers know, we're working together as a team. We're each taking on different roles. We're relying on each other. The mechanics of the game, when they're done well, help bring us together in a shared goal that really can deepen that feeling of relatedness. Video games do have the right pieces to satisfy our basic human needs and desires, but it's also important to distinguish that gamers all subconsciously prioritize these needs in different ways. One of the things we know about looking at populations of video game players is that as a general rule, they're not all the same. That's Gabe Zickerman, author, speaker, and expert on gamification and game design. Not every player who plays a competitive team-based shooting game is necessarily winning focus. They may be there for many different reasons, right? Folks who play esports, of course, they love to win and they want to get prizes and get the acclaim and affirmation, but also they like the social aspect of their squad and their team. If all you cared about was winning, but didn't care about the social aspect, there's lots of easier things that you could be doing with your life to accomplish that. So I think it's important to remember that everybody has their own motivation set. We can't generalize that winning is the priority. If video games satisfy our basic human needs, does that mean that video games are good for us? The danger is that we might neglect our basic psychological needs in real life, and instead of trying to gain competency, autonomy, and relatedness in our own life, we search for it through a game. The question of whether or not video games are good or bad for us, I think is the wrong question to be asked. I think the right question to be asked is really, are you in a position to play games as much as you play them? We can all say that, you know, it's fine to have one drink when you go out on Friday night or maybe two drinks or three drinks, but 17 drinks every single night of the week is a problem. There's no reason why video games don't also fall into that category. Games produce positive reactions in people and negative reactions in people. They can be played reasonably by people or kind of extremists. And so the key thing is to figure out some amount of balance 
where you're not spending more money, time, effort than you can afford to spend on the games you play. Ultimately, video games are just one of the many things that can be studied through the self-determination theory, but are certainly a great barometer for examining our motivations for gaming. But let's be honest, did you really need a scientific reason to reach for that controller? Yeah.